So let's establish a coordinate system to help us a little bit later in this video. Let's define the positive y direction to be up as we normally do. With this coordinate system and with zero at the floor, the initial height of the ball is going to be h. So the initial height for both balls is just h. The final height is zero. Which means the delta y, yf minus yi, as it always is, final minus initial, mean, gives us a delta y of negative h. Now let's stop to think about the sign of work done by gravity in this particular problem. The work done by gravity in this problem is going to be positive. Both gravity and displacement of the ball are in the same general direction. Both are down towards the floor. Thus, the work must be positive. In fact, it, we've calculated it, it must be positive mgh. Trying to convert to the coordinate system we have in this problem, we can use delta y equals negative h and substitute for h, giving us that the work done by gravity is mg times minus delta y. Now m and g are constants, so we can pull them inside the delta and the negative sign comes outside, giving us the work done by the force of gravity is minus delta m gy, which if you were to expand it out, gives you the work done by gravity being minus mgyf minus mgyi. This may seem like a lot of formula manipulations at this particular point, but bear with me for a minute. It'll come in in a second. Now let's think about gravity conceptually for a minute in terms of work, our new ideas of work and energy. So let's have some table. We'll put a little cart on it, set up a pulley on the edge of the table, and string a cart from the pulley to some weight. When I let go of the weight, the weight falls and pulls the cart, exerting a force over a distance on our cart. The falling mass, albeit indirectly, does work on the cart. The force of gravity pulling the mass down did work on our cart, which means that the relative positions of the mass and the earth have a possibility to do work. That mass just sitting above the earth has a possibility of doing work. And if you remember from last class, the possibility to do work is what energy is. In other words, there is energy in the system solely from the relative positions of the objects of the mass and the earth. We call this energy due to the relative positions potential energy. Note, the mass can't have potential energy by itself. I have to think about the relative position of the mass and the Earth. It's the two objects together that give me the idea of potential energy. But we happen to know how much work the force of gravity can do on that mass and consequently indirectly on the cart because we have looked at it for a falling ball earlier in this video. The amount of work done by gravity is always minus delta mgy. We call this mgy the potential energy due to the relative positions of the earth and the ball, or in the case of the cart, the relative positions of the earth and the hanging mass. Mathematically, we write this as ug equals mgy. You may see in other contexts potential energy written as pe. I don't really like this notation because to me, this looks like P times E. It's two letters multiplied together. And it makes it somewhat confusing. Since there's already a bunch of other things in physics that use the letter P, like pressure and momentum, I prefer 
instead of using PE or P to use U. U doesn't seem to be used very much, so I'm going to use U for potential energy. So the potential energy due to gravity from the relative positions of, say, a ball in the Earth or a mass in the Earth is given by MGY. We choose this definition for the conceptual reason that more y, or higher off the ground, means more potential energy. This matches with our intuitive understanding. The higher an object is off the ground, the more work it can potentially do, so the more energy it must have. However, it does result in kind of a goofy negative sign. With this definition of potential energy, and this result for work, we see that the work is equal to negative the change in potential energy, minus delta U. This minus sign is purely a consequence from our choices here, but we make this choice so that our definition of potential energy makes some conceptual sense. So now let's put it, everything together, potential energy, kinetic energy, and work for an object just falling, probably the simplest case we can think of. So as an object just falls from a height yi to a height yf, we know that the work done by gravity on the ball is given by the change in the gravitational potential energy. Work equals minus delta u. Now, delta is always finus, final minus initial, so work is minus the quantity u final minus u initial. Or distributing the minus sign, work is u initial minus u final. And this is the work done by the force of gravity on the falling object. But we also know from the work energy theorem that the change in kinetic energy of the ball is given by work equals delta k. Recall that this expression, where as long as we're talking about the network, is always true. As long as we're talking about the network, the sum of all the works on the object, the network is going to be equal to the change in kinetic energy. For this particular falling object, the only force acting on it is the force of gravity, so the network is equal to the work done by gravity, which is calculated using potential energy. Delta is again final minus initial. Now, if we go through and set this work equal to this work, we get this expression, which after rearranging gives us something that looks a little bit more interesting. Ui plus Ki equals Uf plus Kf, or in other words, conservation of energy. Whatever energy we start with is the energy we end with. We see that energy is conserved for gravitational forces. I can convert freely from potential energy to kinetic energy back and forth without any loss, at least in principle. The real world is, of course, a little bit messier. But we can also see that the idea of work is central to this whole thing of conservation of energy. So work is how we connect potential energy to kinetic energy, get, giving us conservation of energy, and work is also how we connect energy to our previous understanding of forces. Now you might be thinking to yourself, is energy always conserved? Yes, this is a fundamental concept of the universe. You might also be asking yourself, is there a potential energy for every force we've talked about? Say, springs, friction, electrical forces. Well, the answer to that is, not every force has a potential energy. This is a concept that will be explored in one of the later videos on conservative versus non-conservative forces. In addition, I recommend that you watch some of Heath Hatch's videos to see examples of how to use this idea in physics problems. This concludes this video.